year. Are you all excited yet about this organization? I am so thrilled to be here and to be a part of this, this XPRIZE family. It's exactly how I think change is going to happen. Um, incentive prizes are absolutely the way to go when governments and industry are not succeeding. Um, they bring together philanthropic capital together with solutions. And as a philanthropist, that's what I'm always looking for. We're all looking for how do we measure what we do and how is it successful. And I can tell you in the last less than a year of, of dealing with uh, Peter and Kristen and Megan and Francis and this wonderful XPRIZE family, we are making a difference. Uh, as Peter said, we had 350 pre-registered teams for this prize. And, and we will be announcing within a couple of weeks the 10 finalists. And it's not even a year, and, and it's really um, thrilling to me. Um, I got involved with all of this, as, as many of you, I know you've been standing a long time, so I'll make this kind of short. Uh, it was a horrible disaster that was unfolding last summer, if you remember. It didn't have an end, and Superman was not coming. And disasters are no fun, except maybe if you're in Hollywood and you make movies about disasters, but they're not fun. Um, and I was, I lost the story. Um, not only upset about what was going on, but also the attitude about it, um, the language that was being used about it. I, I felt like people were really misunderstanding and misinterpreting what was actually happening. Uh, we disrupted a very intricate web of interdependent relationships, under the water and on the land. And it's really not okay for us to do that, uh, knowing what we know now about our interdependency. Uh, even the language of spill really upset me because a spill to me is a teacup coming off the table. It's a sippy cup in the car that has juice in it. This was not a spill. This was an oil volcano. And it was not a natural disaster, but a man-made disaster. And we were responsible, all of us, with our thirst and appetite for oil and for the, the mindset that, that favors speed over safety, which has dominated um, the way we think, that's what addicts do. Uh, this oil spill, if you don't know, was the size of Los Angeles County, uh, the size of the big island of Hawaii, if you need another visual on it. Um, we did use existing technologies to try to clean it up, that was great, and we were really amazed that, that organic bacteria could, could consume some of it, that was wonderful. But the fact is, the story isn't over, the dispersants we used um, have never been tested uh, under the surface before, and we really don't know the long-term effects of, of this, these chemicals on the organisms in the ocean. Um, much of the oil, of course, you know, never made it to the surface. And so, although some was dispersed, an awful lot of the heavier compounds in the oil have found their way to the bottom of the ocean floor, where they sit on a graveyard of sediment-living animals and jellyfish and other creatures from above that, that got caught up in all of that. So the visible damage um, of this is still going on. A year later, we'll have the anniversary next week, and oil is still washing up on the shore. The Coast Guard issued a report last week that, that acknowledged that. Tar balls are still uh, washing ashore. The wildlife losses, as they're calculated based on statistics from other spills, are beyond what people saw, and it will take generations for us to really understand the impact on reproduction and populations um, of all the wildlife. Uh, we do know in another example in Buzzards Bay, Falmouth Harbor, there was a spill 40 years ago, and scientists are still finding abnormalities in tissue and organ samples of marine life there. So if this is a really long tail. And then of course you have to ask what's happened to the people of the Gulf since a year ago. And while we think about the people who worked in the oil industry as being really important, there are 85 workers in the hospitality and tourist industry to every one worker in the oil and gas sector. So all of those people have lost their livelihoods, uh, billions of dollars of lost income, uh, claims have been filed. The whole economic basis of the region, if you think about it, has really been destroyed. And that is a national security issue, if you think about it that way. I mean, we have natural disasters, they're going to happen. Obviously what happened in Japan is terrible. Earthquakes and tsunamis and floods and tornadoes in the Midwest, it's all gonna happen. But an unnatural disaster of a man-made origin is really something else. And the deeper we go in the search of oil 
uh, in the ocean, the more exposed we are really to the, these tremendous risks, exponentially so. Uh, the, the drilling that used to go on was at 15,000 feet below the ocean, and, and that was considered the horizon. Today, the horizon is 35,000 feet deep. And so what's really interesting about what happened in the Gulf is that the deep water horizon well was an exploratory one, and it was in um, relatively shallow water. It was uh, drilling a mile under the water into three miles of rock, and when it hit this highly pressurized, um, what you call it, um, help me? Pocket. Pocket, that's the word. Pocket of oil and gas. It was as if this explosion was an inevitable result of, of the um, competition in the industry to do things faster and cheaper and to push the limits of what is safe and what is possible and even what is wise. And the explosion, uh, of course, um, surprised many people in the industry because the area had been drilled for, for a long time. The geology was really well understood. And as I said, the water was relatively shallow. So you can just imagine, this isn't a question of, of if this will ever happen again, it's, it's really a question of when. Uh, in a fundamentally dangerous industry, uh, let's take together heavy machinery with volatile hydrocarbon and um, extract them at high pressure in really pristine environments. Okay. And you've got a recipe for, well, a disaster film. <laughs> Certainly a disaster. And, and that's what we're doing. Now, President Obama had a commission last year um, a uh, seven-member commission that studied this whole spill and identified not bad guys in certain companies, but rather a systemic failure of a whole industry where the oversight, the regulatory oversight, is, is less than you have in the aviation industry. It's certainly nothing like the chemical processing industry or the nuclear uh, power industry, and it probably needs to be. So we really need to change the way that we think about how we use natural resources, um, this is something that our foundation is working on all the time, given the, the information that we have now. Um, we use computers, all of us, and, and t telephone technology, and we understand the interconnectedness of all of us as people, and living systems are the same. And if we don't use this knowledge, we, we are not being wise. Um, it's especially true when it comes to, um, to drilling for fossil fuels, because we're doing this now as if we have another planet we can jump off to when things don't go so well here. And as we know, that's not true. So the X Prize Challenge is here as a way to bring the best minds in the world to solve this problem about surface oil, how to clean it up quickly when it spills. And from my point of view, a $1.4 million prize is really a drop in the barrel in terms of the billions of dollars of profits that go to the oil and gas industry every year. And to think that we could have that much impact through this prize so quickly is, is phenomenal. Um, the reality is the industry has no economic incentive to solve the problem or it would have been done. And the government has not done its part either. So uh, anyway, a quick update on the prize. We, we, have, uh, we will be announcing the 10 finalists for the prize within a week or two. And these teams will be competing this summer in New Jersey at a facility that's a federal facility, a giant pool called OMSET. That sounds pretty good, huh? And uh, they will be, uh, they, they've already, they, their preliminary plans have already been evaluated by our judging panel that consists of people in the industry who understand what they need for a product. So the market's being built people from NOAA, people from the Coast Guard who clean up this stuff, so they understand. Yes, <laughs> wonderful. And um, what's also really interesting here is that the, um, the candidates, I mean the people who have submitted their, their applications, they come from 10 different countries, 17 different states in the United States. Half of them come from brand new companies with brand new ideas that nobody's ever heard of. And half of them come from existing industries and existing known players in the field. So it's a fascinating crossover. It's really as if companies have been just waiting for the opportunity to show what they have. And, and that's what the XPRIZE Foundation is providing here, this tremendous opportunity. So I'm going to close, and I had picked this out before, and I heard another Carl Sagan quote here earlier um, from Jim. Um, this is mine. It came to me in an email yesterday about something entirely different, but I, it may inspire you, so I want to share it. 
uh, Carl Sagan said, if we long for our planet to be important, there is something we can do about it. We make our world significant by the courage of our questions and by the depth of our answers. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Woo.